This is a Squeeze podcast. We're your shortcut to being informed. Squeeze Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh. Good morning and welcome to Squiz Kids Today, your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. I'm Bryce Corbett. It's Friday, February 11, in Squiz Kids Today. The power of the sun on Earth. The most romantic place on the planet. Big day for Aussie snowboarders and the frog that took on a Nerf gun. That's what's making news, kids style. The Lowdown. There was a major scientific breakthrough yesterday in the way humans produce energy, which might just be the answer to a cleaner, greener future. The process is called nuclear fusion. Okay, okay, I know it's a Friday, but stay with me on this one. Put simply, nuclear fusion is a process of pushing two small atoms together to create one big one. A process that causes a reaction which generates energy in the form of heat. Nuclear fusion is what makes the sun shine so brightly and give off so much heat. It's also what makes stars sparkle in the night sky. And until yesterday, we weren't so good at making it happen down here on Earth. That's until a bunch of clever scientists in the United Kingdom successfully performed a nuclear fusion experiment, which went so well, they're now confident they can build power stations that do not emit greenhouse gases, do not need fossil fuels to run them, and do not produce nasty byproducts like radioactive waste. Win, win, win. With countries all over the world, including Australia, in a race to tackle climate change and reduce greenhouse gas emissions, this breakthrough might just deliver the clean energy we need. I've stuck a link in today's episode notes to a nuclear fusion explainer graphic and to a story about the breakthrough with photos of the cool donut-shaped machine that helped make it happen. Spin the globe. Each day we give the world globe a spin and find a new story from wherever it stops. And today we've landed in the Maldives, the collection of more than 1,200 tropical islands in the turquoise waters of the Indian Ocean, which has just been named the most romantic holiday destination in the world. What does romantic mean? Well, in this case, it means a place where you can go with the person you love to have some special time together. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about kissing. You, right? But the timing could not be better, my friends, because Monday is Valentine's Day. And as some of you may already know, Valentine's Day is the day for romance all over the world. Traditionally, people give one another cards and flowers and chocolates to show their love. But it hasn't always been this way. As we discuss in this week's Squiz Kids Shortcut to the history and origins of Valentine's Day, it actually began life as a festival thousands of years ago where people would whip one another with goat skins. Hmm, I think I like the whole flower and chockies thing better. Shortcuts are released every Friday to classrooms who have signed up via our website to our Squiz Kids for Schools classroom resources and on Mondays to parents who have signed up via Apple Podcasts to Squiz Kids subscriber specials. There are links to both in today's episode notes. Sport time! It's going to be a big day at the Winter Olympics for our snowboarders today because we have not one but two Aussies in the final of the snowboard halfpipe, both competing for an Olympic medal. First up, there's Scotty James, who won bronze at the last Winter Olympics and has qualified in second place for today's final. Then there's 16-year-old sensation Valentino Giuselli, who's at his first Olympic Games, has a smile as big as Sydney Harbour, and qualified only half a point behind American snowboard legend Sean White, who is more than twice as old as him. The half-pipe final kicks off around lunchtime today. Maybe if you're really good this morning, your teacher will let you watch it or listen to it. Sit up straight now. Animal Kingdom. Hands up if you've ever played with a Nerf gun. Yep, I thought there'd be a lot of you. Okay, now, hands up if your parents have ever said something like, okay, fun's over, time to pick up all the darts. Yep, boring. 
But there's one little green tree frog who agrees with your parents. It's lucky to be alive after it accidentally swallowed a Nerf dart as long as its whole body. It's also lucky that it chose to live in the home of a family who love amphibians. So when Cooper and Callum O'Brien told their mum about a funny looking frog in the shower, she called the vet, even though it was nine o'clock at night. I've popped a link in your episode notes to the most extraordinary video of a vet nurse using a spoon to pry the frog's mouth open, then pull out the dart, which had become stuck diagonally in the frog's stomach. Fun fact, did you know that usually if a frog swallows something it doesn't like, it can push its whole stomach out of its mouth, flip out the offending object, then swallow its guts again? Amazing. Now that would be handy around the dinner table sometimes, wouldn't it, when the broccoli comes out? Quiz Kids Correspondence. It's a Friday, and you know what that means. It's time to check in with one of our Squiz Kids Correspondents. Because we have so many listeners all over Australia and spread about the world, this is a chance for you to tell us what your life is like. It's super easy to do. Follow the instructions contained in the link in today's episode notes, record an audio file into your phone and email it back to us. Whether you're an Aussie in the outback, or living in the centre of one of our cities, or living life in a country far, far away, we want to hear from you. And because this week is all about the Beijing Winter Olympics, it seems like a perfect time to check in with nine-year-old squiz kid Millie Ling, who lives in that very city. Take it away, Millie! My name is Millie Lian. I'm nine years old and I live in Beijing, China. The main language spoken here is Mandarin, and this is how you say in Chinese. 你好，我的名字叫 Millie。我今年九岁，我住在北京。My favorite subjects are music and English. Most kids here eat in the cafeteria for school lunch. My favorite food to eat here is noodle because it is very, very yummy. My least favorite food to eat here is tofu because it tastes like slime. Yuck! Probably the most surprising thing people eat here is chicken feet and rabbit head. Here are my three favorite things about living here. Number one, I have hip hop dancing because I get to have fun with my friends and learn new moves. Number two, I can make snow angels because it snows a lot in Beijing. Number three, I get to have sleepovers and play dates with my friends because most of my friends live in the same yard as I do, or even next to my yard. I listen to Squiz Kids every morning, and my favorite bit is Spin the Globe. I hope you're able to visit one day. This is Millie in Beijing signing off. Now get out there and have a most excellent day. Over and out. Time for the quiz. This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one: What event will two Aussies compete in for an Olympic medal today? That's right. It's the snowboard halfpipe. Question number two. What lovey-dovey day will be celebrated around the world on Monday? Yeah, that's right. It's Valentine's Day. Better get your secret admirer cards ready. Question number three: What did a green tree frog in Queensland get stuck in its tummy? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was a Nerf gun dart. Ouch. Yeah! Shout outs. It's February 11. On this day, 170 years ago, the first ever game of first class cricket was played in Australia. It was Tasmania versus Victoria in a match held in Launceston. Go Tassie. It's also a Friday, and you know what that means. Great excuse to crack out the old birthday reggae tune. Hit it! <laughs> And it's a very happy birthday today to the following Squiz Kids celebrating their birthday today. Maximilian from Forest Lake, Issy from Abbotsford, Margot from Balgala Heights and Lily from South Australia. And belated birthday wishes go to Nathaniel from Maroubra and Jax, Marco and Tom all from Exeter Public School. Not forgetting of course those Squiz Kids celebrating a birthday over the coming weekend. Jacob from Torquay and Matty from Wheeler's Hill. 
And we don't usually give classroom shoutouts on a Friday, but it's a special occasion. And a classroom shoutout to 3T at St Joseph's Primary School in Kempsey, where Miss Tarrant is celebrating her birthday over the coming weekend. Happy birthday. Don't forget, if you've got a birthday coming up and you want a shout-out, or if you're after a classroom shout-out, drop us a line at squizkids at thesquiz.com.au. Well, that's all we have time for. Thanks for listening to Squiz Kids today. We'll be back again on Monday. In the meantime, get out there and have a most excellent weekend. Over and out. Over and out.